I'm professional ski instructor Jim Redmond at Winter Park Mary Jane with my friend Lita, and we'll be back with some ski tips to help you flatlanders learn how to ski right after this. <laughs> <laughs> Guess where I am. Look, 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 look at the beautiful mountains. We're up in Colorado in Winter Park and Mary Jane, and you've seen this guy on the air for the past year. He's professional ski instructor Jim Redmond, who has a terrific sense of humor. He makes us laugh all the time, and he makes skiing look easy, simple, and funny. It is. But it is. Yeah, it's all those things. Yeah, when you, when you know what you're doing. He has a, a unique knack with the language. You make us laugh while we're learning. Can you give me some of the language tips that, that help your, your students when you teach them, Jim? Well, some of the key words are like glunch, kathump, Whap and uh -huh. um, what we try to do in language when you're teaching people to ski is find words that fit the motion you want. If I say to you, uh, gee, just uh, pressure the ski subtly as you come through the turn, that doesn't reflect what the motion really is. If I say to you, okay, as you come through the turn, I want you to sound like a car, you know, and, and each time kind of race the engine and, and stair step your way through it and you go, and, and, and. what happens is the pressure stays on the ski all the way through the turn, makes the turn happen. Uh, language is the single biggest barrier in teaching anything. You know, you take little kids out who are um, three or four years old and you say, come on and do what I do. And you go, shh, down the hill. And they go right behind you. You take an adult out and you say the same thing and they say, well, wait a minute, in college <laughs> we discussed nuclear physics and how, how do the force vectors, they get all lost in the $9 words that we've come accustomed, are accustomed to using throughout our college experience. So do you then break out of that. talk yourself down the hill or advise your students to explain what it is that you're doing? Oh yeah, a lot of times I'll, I'll give a student uh, a series of words. Um, you know, uh, plant, up, release, float, 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 drive, 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 drive. And I'll get them to do that kind of chain of events, verbalize it to them. And then I'll stand at the bottom of the run and I'll have them yell up to me and I'll stand down there and I've got people streaking all over the hill and others are looking around thinking, God, you guys are crazy, but it works. And that's what we're after. We want to have people learn how to ski, not just entertain them. Um, that makes teaching sort of an art for them, if you will. Uh, you know, it's one thing to say, try this. It's another to give a person a way to accomplish that end. All right, will you give us some help? We're flatlanders here in Nebraska and Kansas. And of course, Colorado's just the next state over, and we want to come off in this winter okay. up here to Colorado and ski. Where do we start if we're not accustomed to skiing or know how to proceed, Jim? Okay, the, the first thing is uh, you can get equipment in the rental shops here, so you don't have to worry about dealing with all that stuff. When you show up at the ski area and you're what we call a never ever, which means you never ever, <laughs> then uh, uh, you know we can take care of you from start to finish. We're used to doing that because it's a big resort and uh, you know we have never evers every day. The, the big thing is to get plenty of sleep and allow enough travel time so that um, you can get up here and be comfortable that first day skiing. A lot of times people will try to take off uh, from Lincoln after work at five o'clock at night. They'll drive all night long come up over the pass, they're going to go from, what, 3,000 feet or so in Lincoln. 1,180 feet. 1,180 to 9,000 where we're standing here. And they pull in the parking lot at 8 in the morning, sign up for a ski class. <laughs> Boom, we go to the top up there at 10. And, uh, you know, it's like three turns later and we're, uh, we're nodding off we're Ready for the, <laughs> for the hot tub. Yeah, and that doesn't make for the best experience for them because they're too tired. So I'd suggest when you want to make one of those long jaunts, try and take off work uh, Friday or uh, leave Friday at noon and come in and uh, try to get to the area in time to have a good night's sleep or sleep on the road. The other thing to avoid is um, when you come up uh, on the freeway out of Denver, you want to be through Denver by uh, at least uh, 7 o'clock in the morning because the Denver crowd is coming up on Saturday morning and you get caught in that large volume of traffic and it takes longer and it's more aggravation. You know, you're all of a sudden you're in rush hour. So if you, if you get through Denver, by 7 o'clock, the traffic's fairly light, it's kind of fun, hop over the top of the pass, you can have breakfast here, and it's a better experience. Mm -hmm. You get more, really, for your vacation dollar, because you're, you feel better. What, what could a, a weekend cost us if we left Nebraska and we're heading for just the weekend up to Winter Park? Can you give me a ballpark <laughs> figure? Boy, um, that depends on how you do it. Now, yeah. you're talking to a, an old Montana kid, you know, and uh, mountain kids are pretty weird. We used to take a couple sleeping bags, throw it in the back of the pickup, uh, always skip lunch because that costs money, <laughs> save up money for the lift tickets, and, you know, you can do it for $40. That's the uh, cost of a uh, lift ticket for two days, you know, $20 a day. So 
Um, you can go real cheap or, y or you can go the other end. You know, you can rent a condo, it'll cost you probably in the neighborhood of, of uh, 60 to $100 a night, depending how fancy it is. Uh, the lift tickets will cost you $20 a person a day. Um, your gas, it depends, of course, on what kind of car. But I would think that you could do a, a pretty nice weekend, uh, say a three-day jaunt, for uh, three to four hundred dollars. It, it really depends on what you want to get out of it. Would you recommend that people take lessons when they come? Oh, yeah. Um, the worst problem we have in skiing, I think, is that most people don't take enough lessons. They take two or three, and then they come out and they can navigate around the <laughs> hill, you know. So then they come out and they crash and burn on their own. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if, if you come out and you, and you take a lesson uh, the morning you come out, you haven't skied for a while, we can loosen you up, uh, get you on your feet again, and then you're going to get more out of that skiing experience too. Um, the problem in skiing is that you cannot see yourself ski. You can't do it. You know, your eyes point this way, and all you see are your tips a little bit and the hill that you're going to go down. So you need another pair of eyes to say, um, gee, you, you've got to move your hip around a little bit more. Or, gee, you, you know, you're stooped over too far. Uh, this kind of thing. See, so I say, stand up. Ah! Now, just, just, now, just look up. Stand, hunch over like you're going to wrestle with me. See? Okay. There you go. Okay. Now, just relax and, and bounce up. Okay, I'm ready. Turn, turn, turn. I did the butterfly. <laughs> and that's really fun, but you need somebody to sort of guide yeah. you through it. Yeah. Because it's a little different, you know. You don't walk around Lincoln, Nebraska, or, or the middle of Kansas with uh, seven-foot boards on your feet. <laughs> so the first thing we do, we haul you up here, we strap these things on, and we say, okay, have a good time. And you feel like a duck out of water. If people are from Nebraska and Kansas want to come up, can get you as an instructor? Sure. Hey. Yeah, I'm hanging hey. around up here. You bet. <laughs> I teach mostly on the weekends. Okay. And, uh, work up here at the Jane, and uh, part of the Jane gang. and. We're a kind of a bunch of weirdos. We're a breed apart, you know. You know, aren't strange. you on television too, Jim? Yes. Yeah, I work at the uh, CBS affiliate in Denver. Right. Another CBS. The eye is on That's us. That's right. It sure is. Hey, it's been a real pleasure, Jim Redmond. Yeah, you're going to do that to me. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> he said that you can't pack the snow up here at Winter Park because it's, it's pretty hard. It's so soft. Uh oh, I'm getting a little bit yeah, of a see, that's, though here. Look at that, that's Rocky Mountain powder. Look at how nice that is, just like flowers. We want to invite everybody to come out to Winter Park, Colorado, Mary Jane, and have the time of your life. And if you're lucky sure. enough, you get to meet this guy. Maybe he can <laughs> teach you. And if you can't come up, we'll just watch his ski tips regularly on 10, 11, 1. Yeah, do that. Thanks, Jim. Thanks. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I may, though. <laughs> Please stay tuned. There's more to come. It's 10, 11, 1. Continues. <laughs> 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 <laughs>